can't believe that these games are ending so fast. Jadong is just dominating right now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But that doesn't mean that Flash can't come back. It's certainly possible. My name is Nick Plot. If you are just now joining us, this is the GOM TV Avratech Intel Classic Grand Final. And I think uh, it's proving to be quite exciting. So far, though, uh, Flash really hasn't even managed to get into the uh, mid-late game. A lot of pro gamers joke that, you know, if you manage to survive for about 15 minutes against Flash, there's no way you're going to win because he never loses late game. Jadong's just not even letting the game evolve to that point. Uh, and by the way, i got to say, this is the best Zergling Mutalisk harassment I've seen in a very, very, very long time. Uh, his decision-making on where to go with the Mutalisks, he's totally reading Flash out uh, very, very well. Uh, and i got to hand it to Jadong. Uh, he could close this with a 3-0. I don't know. Very entertaining games here. Uh, a real rush to watch. Quite educational, too. Uh, how to take down these macro Terrans who might have weaknesses or holes in their game early on. So, very exciting game. We did have a brief break um, where uh, we did let the uh, people working here and the pro gamers run to the restroom. I did uh, see myself in the mirror and find out that the lady who does my hair did make me look like a Super Saiyan again. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I also uh, did get to see Flash and Jadong backstage. Now, Flash, his coach, um, right after he got out of the restroom, immediately pulled him aside and started giving him a pep talk, saying, hey, you are fine. You can still win this. You just have to survive uh, through the first 10 minutes. He said, clearly, Jadong has practiced an aggressive opener, knowing that your late game is uh, the strongest point. So what you have to do is survive into the late game. You have to make it that far, and then you won't be... Uh, able to be stopped. Now, Jadong's coach uh, was very pleased with him, said, hey, look, just one more game, one more game, and uh, and we'll be out of here, and you can do it. He said, you've already scared Flash. Flash is already shaken up. All you have to do is uh, close this out, do what you've been doing already. You have room to experiment now. You have to lose three games in a row to not uh, win this, so just keep it together. Um you know, if you want to try something a little bit more risky, but might close the game out now, feel free to do it. So we'll see exactly what Jadong chooses. Jadong has to choose wisely, though. Flash is a monster, uh, but Jadong is apparently more monstrous than Flash right now. Flash nicknamed the ultimate weapon in Korea. Jadong nicknamed the legend killer. Two serious badass killers right now. Whew. Well, the next map is Katrina, a four-player map. Uh, makes for some pretty interesting games, especially in Zerg versus Terran. Terran definitely have to be careful of the stomp lurker trick. Um, I'm betting that Jadong will go Mutalisks again. It seems like Flash is struggling to control his units uh, well enough to actually hold off some of this harassment. So 
Maybe he'll do something different, though. You, you know, it's hard to say. You know, these players do mix it up. I doubt that Flash will go for fast command center, though. He's too far behind. He can't afford to take that risk. There's a lot of money on the line here um, and a lot of notoriety. Um, in possibly less than 30 minutes, we're going to see who is really the best player uh, in the world at this moment. Number one against number two. Right now, Flash was at um, well, at this moment in history. Flash is at number two. Uh, excuse me, number one. And Jadong is at number two. So, uh, looks like Jadong is getting his revenge so far. But can he keep that ball rolling? Can he keep doing it? We'll find out soon enough. By the way, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again. Thank you to our sponsors at Intel. Go buy something Intel-related. Intel likes StarCraft. And you must like StarCraft. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here uh, watching this. So, go support them. Intel, of course, always a wonderful company when it comes to supporting esports uh, anywhere. Also, feel free to check out uh, my site now, www.tastelessgaming.com. We have replays and VODs, and we're going to have other cool stuff on there, too. This is just the beginning. Sorry it took so long to get that thing set up. Cheers to everybody in the IRC channels. Guys, go make some popcorn, grab a beer, get comfortable. We're going to see Game 3 here very soon. As you can see, Flash's win percentage is a little bit higher than Jadon's, but that doesn't seem to matter at this moment. It just looks like... Uh, Jadong is tearing him apart. I mean, these games have not been close, uh, to put it lightly. <laughs> well, um, Katrina's a pretty interesting map, though. We're probably going to see the Zerg try to get that uh, third expansion somewhere very far away from the uh, Terran, usually at one of the back expos of the other mains. So we'll see if that happens. Dropship control is very critical on this map, as there are many locations that are very hard to get to. Zerg really wants to get the good surround on this map. There's a lot of back doors, a lot of counterattacks for the Zerg on this map. Terran has to be prepared for that as well. Starcraft, the most competitive game on Earth. Jadong and Flash, the two best players in the world. Uh, duking it out right now. Jadong is just dominating. I, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I thought it was going to be a little bit closer than this, but uh, it hasn't been the case. Maybe that'll turn around. We'll see. Cheers to all the community sites. Uh, we really appreciate you watching us. Spread the word. Uh, I know we're getting a ton of hits right now. I mean, full bandwidth. Uh, it's From what I understand, most people are having a, a, a good time viewing it. Um, we do apologize if there is some problems with lag. We did increase our bandwidth ability a lot during the semifinals. Get ready for four games. Starcraft, the best game on earth. It's old, but it's also perfect. I hate it when people complain about the graphics on this game. It's really, uh, when you think about it, it's actually quite easy to see what's going on because it is so simple. You always hear those kids like, the graphics are old, the game is bad. But in reality, it really is the most competitive and complex RTS game ever made. Jadong's in pretty good shape right now. Certainly has improved his game uh, since his bout with Never, also known as 4GG. And there is Flash. Probably a little bit more relaxed after talking to his coach. First Depot going up. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty critical moment for Flash to not mess up. Now, let's see if he goes for something risky. He may go for the fast command center. Now, we haven't seen a pool just yet. He's not going to go for the fast command center. He's going to go for the early barracks, and I think this is the safe decision. Going for the fast command center. Can 
work out in the long run, but when you think about it, uh, Jadong um, is known, well, he's nine pulled before on this map. That's how he beat Boxer, calling out his bluff on the fast command center. So Jadong going to go with the econ game. Two drones being used to scout. Probably going to check for proxy barracks. I have had the opportunity to sit behind both of these gamers and watch them play. Uh, and I have to say, I, they just don't make mistakes. They're uh, almost perfect. Flash around, uh, from what I understand, 420 APM. Jadong, I believe, in the 400s as well. 430, I think, actually, a little bit faster, which is unusual for a Zerg player. Terran actually required the highest APM, uh, followed by Zerg, and finally Protoss don't uh, require the... Uh, lowest APM, but the most precision. And look at this, Jadon gonna go for three hatch. Three hatches before the spawning pool, that's the uh, significant part of that. And Jadon's gonna keep his drone alive for as long as possible. We still have people pouring in here. We actually have, uh, from what I understand, more people packed outside of the uh, studio than we have people inside the studio because so many people showed up to see this. This is the dream final here. And right now it's not looking good uh, at all for Flash. Flash in the same position Jadong was in the MSL finals. We're still trying to pack chairs in here to fill up uh, all these locations. I mean, we knew a lot of people were going to come, but it's just, I mean, it's out of control how packed this is. Second barracks being constructed. That's location Zerg is unlikely to spot, too. The amount of stress that Flash is probably experiencing is immense. He really, 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 really uh, needs to get it together. He has really been playing, um, you can see, uncomfortably, uh, particularly on the micro side. Macro side, seems, he seems to be doing fine, but he's just losing so many units, he can't actually muster up a large amount. There are the Jadong fans. Turtling behind that Jadong sign. The SCV has been picked off now. Now Flash is somewhat in the dark. I'm sure Flash is aware of the third hatchery. Um, someone of his caliber has to know that something's missing. Not to mention the third hatchery build is not uncommon. My god, we still have people filing in here. I'm actually right next to the front door, so I just keep seeing them funnel people in. I guess we're letting them in in small groups so that things don't get out of control in here. We keep landing the barracks on, then blocking them out, and then we lift it up again and let a few more in. Well, Flash is moving out. Now, this is a pretty aggressive build. Normally, you see the Terran uh, go for the Fast Expo, and he did not really go for a Fast Expo here. The Spire now in a location that's unlikely um, to be hit. That is the farthest spot for Flash to reach on the map. Flash does scout the top right to see if his opponent expanded there. He probably knows the hidden expansion is at the top, top left. Well, he's putting a few uh, Sunga colonies up here pretty soon. I don't know if they're going to get done in time. Excuse me. Um, I missed saw what was going on in the minimap. He does, in fact, have the Spire um, at the uh, main or the uh, bottom left expansion, not the top left. This monitor, a uh, little bit, little bit dim. And as you can see at the bottom, these guys are really spending their money. Now, it looks like Jadong is barely going to get this up in time. But it looks like, looks like Flash, oh, going to build one bunker here. Now he can take out the extractor that way. Taking out the extractor really hurts the Zerg. The Zerg needs as many Mutalisks as possible. Now look at this. You can see that Flash is really focusing on getting a ton of uh, Marines and Medics 
We don't really seem to, we doesn't seem to be teching that much at this moment. Yeah, I question how cost effective this uh, strategy is going to be. But Flash is certainly very smart. And he will indeed get the extractor. I believe. Yeah, he should be able to get it in that amount of time. Yeah, he will. So no extractor for the time being. Now Jadong's gonna have to deal with that. Stop um, that group of units from gathering up over there at the top. Now, meanwhile, Flash does have a lot of units in his base. Looks like he will have turrets up in time. One is certainly not gonna be enough though. Let's hope that Flash doesn't make the same mistake again. A lot of people don't know this. There's actually a little man in the turret. If you click on the icon, you will see that there's a little guy sitting in the center. And he never stops spinning around. I mean, he must get dizzy in that thing. Jadong moves in now. Takes out an SCV and a Marine, but pulls out. Now, Flash will probably over-defend here because he doesn't want to get in that same situation again. Flash knows the longer the game goes on, the stronger he gets. I'm not sure what Flash's plans are with this location um, at the top. I don't know what that bunker is going to do for him unless he uh, can manage to get some tanks there and start harassing that expansion. The Hive is done, which means we're probably going to see Greater Spire possibly, but more than likely the Defiler Mount. Of course, he has Red Upgrade. Here he comes again. Now, bear in mind, Jadong hasn't really done any damage to Flash. He's not really uh, hurting him that much. So both players are pretty solid right now. And as you can see at the bottom, they're so good at spending their money. Only nine Mutalisks out for Jadong. Flash has a pretty standard amount of Marines and Medics and, of course, the two fire beds. Excuse me, the Hive is not quite done. It's on the way over there, though. Well, it does appear as though Jadong does have map control. He is uh, going to be able to keep Flash from getting anywhere too useful. And he is trying to find that. Uh, whoa, what was Flash doing there for a second? Did you see that? Um, yeah, but it does look like he does have map control. Flash is trying to squeeze this group of Medic Marines back there. And, and look at that. He is teching directly towards Ultralis. Looks like uh, Jadong might be getting ready for a counterattack here. Another expansion at the top left. And he's going to move in here for the attack. Now he's going to move down. Flash is already over there, though. He does manage to pick off that group of units. When the vessel comes out, those Ultralisks will be a lot less useful. Double engineering bay here for Flash. Now, Flash doesn't really have any easy spot to attack. Jadong intentionally expanded to the farthest away spots on the map. That was a smart decision, too. Now, with an ultralisk rush like this, it's going to be banking on whether or not uh, Terran can handle it for the time being. And, okay, greater spire tech, too. He's going to force the Terran to not have enough irradiates to deal with the situation. It's going to come down to micro, too, here. Flash is um, actually going to go for the top right. It looks like he will manage to get this expansion. Now, you really can't support ultralisks without the fourth gas geyser, so this is really going to hurt Jadong's economy. And it looks like a Flash is somewhat aware of what's going on. He's getting the two star ports now. Going to go for the double um, production rate of science vessels. Flash rarely loses his science vessels to Scourge, although Jadong's Scourge control is impeccable. Guardians are on the way. And on a map like this, where there are so many valleys, the Guardians can retreat endlessly, making them very powerful. Jadong cancels that hatchery, but he's going to need to expand again pretty soon here. Flash is waiting for enough vessels before he can really get aggressive. Wow, he has a lot of units. 
the lights at the barracks never turn off at Flash's place. There's a nonstop party in those barracks. It's like 7-Eleven, man. They're always open. Almost six. Okay, hold that thought. Here he comes. Now, Jadong has him contained. He's going to have to move down into a more open area, taking minimal casualties here. A lot of Zerglings moving in here as well. Jadon could crush his opponent very easily. Now we're seeing how the, both of these gamers fare in the really, really late drawn-out game. He's going to need to have a lot of irradiates, though. A lot of irradiates. And you can see Jadong's going to expand to a location pretty close to Flash, but a place where he can put a lot of sunken colony stop unit circulation at that point. Another hatchery over here. And he's moving over here again. The Guardians are coming in. And picks off the Scourge. Here comes the Irradiate. Two incredible Irradiates there. But Flash is now getting pushed to the center of the map. There are a lot of Zerglings and Guardians here. But I think Flash may be prepared for that. Flash, however, has not expanded. Defilers are out now. So Dark Swarm can be used to defend these expansions. This is not looking good for Flash at all. But who knows, he may manage to pull through here. We did see how strong uh, Jadong is on this map when he played against Lomo. He is going to get this hatchery. The Guardians are now going to go for the main base. I don't know if Flash is ready for this. Oh, but Jadong should have regrouped. And he can do a few more irradiants over here on the Guardians. Flash manages to deflect the counterattack. Flash has turned this game around. The rest of these Guardians are going to get picked up. The last Guardian goes down. Flash is in pretty good shape now. Jadong needs to get another expansion up and actually start using it. Well, now he should have enough Irradiate to take out the Defilers, but it's still not clear right now. It does seem as though Flash is going to go for the Escape Terran, doing a very late expansion, constructing the Command Center in his main, playing very safe. Here comes the attack. One Irradiate on the Defiler. He will manage to get off one Dark Swarm. Oh! Takes out all three of the vessels. That totally turned the game around. Did you hear that scream I made back there? Crazy game. Really crazy game. Flash, you can see, is falling apart. He has way too much money for someone of his caliber. He's microing pretty well, though. Really blocking off those ultras with the uh, medics. But it looks like Jadong may have too much. No, he comes in from behind, takes out the ultralisks. Flash has to hang on for the next few minutes here if he wants to win this game. Because right now, Jadong seems to have too much. He's going to land that uh, command center, still macroing steadily. One Defiler is on the map somewhere for Jadong, but he doesn't have um, a lot of science vessels. Flash does not have a lot of science vessels, that is. Flash knows he has to spot that Defiler and take it out before it manages to get too close to his base. Going to go for a few irradiates here. There's a Defiler. It's been spotted. I don't think it's going to get too far either. Half health, one-fourth health. One Dark Swarm put down, but not in a very useful location. Now it, Flash moves out over here again. Flash still macroing perfectly. Jadon going to go for a counterattack. Draws Flash back into the map. Flash is playing so carefully right now. He knows this is this game is his only chance. If he loses this, it's all over. And Jadon uh, will humiliate him, taking his throne away saying that, hey, the fact that you're currently ranked number one right now is simply a mistake. Jadong may very well get his revenge on Flash. Flash defeating Jadong 2-1 in the GSI. A tournament you can also find here. Now, bear in mind, though, a lot of science vessels coming up here. He needs to get one more irradiate over there. Another irradiate put down. Got to pull that science vessel out. Does not manage to save it. One dark swarm over here. Looks like Flash is prepared, though. You can see Flash trying to send just small numbers of units now moving out his army. 
A lot of units. Flash in pretty good shape, but he has to be very careful. Jadon can counterattack at any moment. Not uncommon for Terran to put a lot of uh, floating buildings around the map when they're not going to be using them. Here comes Flash from the other side, now being aggressive. One Irradiate on the Defiler, another on the Ultralisk. He's mowing down these units like it's a scene from Starship Troopers. He puts the Ultras on hold position, waiting for the next Defiler to come out. And you can see he's looking for any other units so that he could possibly irradiate, ideally, Defilers. Flash going to reinforce now. Unbelievable. Okay, so now uh, Jadon counterattacks in the bottom to prevent reinforcements. Flash army isolated at the top. More Defilers are out right now. Jadon seems to have this game in the bag. Oh, a really great flag. Jadong is just too strong on this map. The glaring Jadong imbalance is becoming more and more present. More Scorch! Takes out the rest of the vessels! I think it's impossible for Flash to win now! Oh my god. Flash has fallen apart. He is not the Titan he once was. Not at this moment. It is all about Jadong right now. Jadong has almost all of the map. You can see orange is everywhere. At least three-fourths of the map. 40 uh, Marines, nine medics right now for uh, Flash. Not a whole lot of units right now for Jadong either, but Jadong can easily muster those units back up again. And I think that this group of units over here which uh, Flash uh, is setting up here, could get surrounded very easily, but they need to deal some damage, and they need to deal some damage quickly. And here comes another dropship, gonna go for the drop in the back of the base. There may be too many units, though. I don't know how uh, that dropship managed to get back there. That's Flash's dropship and powered off Kimchi. Here comes a massive surround here. He's going to try to get the Defiler mount. But Zergling's already coming through here. I don't think it's going to matter even if he does get the Defiler mount. He does, in fact, get it. Wow, Zergling's with the Adrenal upgrade are pretty good. I would say this is about 95% clear. It's going to be a win right now for Jadong. Jadong, all he has to do right now is attack, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. I cannot believe Flash is losing like this. I am totally speechless. I had no idea. I don't think anybody guessed it was going to be this uh, big of a domination. Oh, my God. Here it is. The finishing blows. Flash has lost. Jadong takes the crown from Flash. He is the best player in the world. Oh my god, I cannot believe Jadong owns Flash that hard. Talk about owning. Unbelievable. Ridiculous. I don't know what else to say. This is just insane. Jadong is the winner, 3-0, clean sweep. Even in the late game, Flash could not do a damn thing against the likes of Jadong. Flash has been crushed. Jadong is now the new champion. And there are the half flags waving around. Very pleased to see that Jadong has come out with a victory against the ultimate weapon, Flash. Wow. Holy crap, guys. Homes and malls. Uh, I did not really expect uh, games to turn out like this. Remember Certainly very good games, though. Just very one-sided games. Well, who is going to be the player who can possibly take down someone like Jadon? He's just too good. He's clearly learned from his mistakes, massively improved his Zerk versus Terran. We are going to get a Simo over here to do the translation for the... Um, for the questions, if she can get over here in time, Susie's going to be over here from the StarCraft community. 
Susie, where are you? I don't see you. Uh, hopefully she'll be here soon. And here she comes now. She will be doing the simul. Translate this for you. As he does talk quite fast. He is just doing an introduction of. Our winner and our second place, who has also fought very hard today. I walk across the dead train yard. Remember Do you remember what happened last year around this time? Not really. I look inside and in my heart. We're never far apart. So there was a close game sometime last year around this time. And he's like, I think I kind of sort of remember that now. He said, you know, are you just strong in tournaments? And he's like, no, it's not that I'm just strong at tournaments, but, you know. I'm sorry, guys. He's really muttering, and I'm not very close to the mic. Hold on a second. You know, you played against everyone in Korea who was in part of this tournament and you won. How do you feel about that? And, uh, you know, I felt really, really good and when I started the season, I even doubted myself. I wasn't sure if I could win. You know, and I was kind of doubting myself, but now that I'm here, I've won it. I feel really, really good about it because I didn't expect to win this. You know, you won this. I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts going on in the back of your head. So here, if you had to thank somebody right now, one person, who would it be? You know, um, You know, my parents had really worried about me a lot, and uh, and so, you know, my parents have supported me all this time, and to my parents, I just want to tell them thank you. don't know how to use the computer much, but just to watch me, they uh, figured out the internet and they're, they're watching this game. If you had to do one, one thing to your fans, say one thing. You know, for all of you guys who uh, cheered for me during this, this final, I prepared hard. I really didn't want you guys to disappoint you guys. And so I really was determined to win this and to get a good result. And uh, I feel really good and, and, I, and I love your cheers. And, and uh, I will be the best pro gamer that I can be for you guys. Oh. So now he's asking the the fan club that's here today to, to go ahead and give him a EJ Dong fighting. And there you go, there you have it. There's the Jedong fan club. He said, you know, if you're all the way up high, you know, sometimes you gotta step back down for a second. And today, for the first time, I'm seeing you with a little bit of uh, doubt and disappointment. Oh, guys, 
I couldn't catch that one. I'm so sorry. You know, I practiced a lot and I got here. And of course I'm disappointed, but there's always next time. You did one win the the Gong TV Invitational. Ever since then, you had this amazing reign. You know. You know, uh, and you've just been really, really good. Now that you know, I guess you're we're showing everyone that you are human, indeed. He said, "Well, you know." I will practice hard and next season I will bring myself back up here and I'll show you a great game. He's like, well, you know, just like Chen said, I tried hard. My, my father came up here to watch me um, and next time I get up to this point, I will win the entire thing. And now uh, I think they're looking for Flash's father in the crowd. Uh, the cameraman apparently can't find him, however. But, um, all right. But, you know, his parents definitely has been uh, cheering for him all along. So, he's saying, you know, thank you so much for being here. And next time there will be another chance. And I will do my best to, to win that one. Alright guys, I tried my best and I do apologize if I didn't catch everything, but um, here we go. And there you have it, there's the final cheer for our beloved Flash, who Chen Dong has proven is human and he can be taken down. So here you go, here's Tasteless. Oh my god, I can't believe it, Flash is actually human. This is ridiculous. We hope you guys enjoyed that translation. Thank you, little Susie, for helping us out with that. Uh, I speak a little bit of Korean, but she's uh, better at doing something like simul, obviously. Uh, probably better at articulating their feelings as well. Oh, my God. Talk about crazy games back here. Unbelievable. Uh, we're going to be presenting the awards here. That's Paul, our lead commentator. He's Slayer's Boxer's old mentor. Do you ever feel like these pro gamers always kind of say the same thing in these interviews? It's always like, I will train harder and I will do better next time. I want to see some serious WWF style trash talking. That's what I want to see. Well, we're going to um, gonna present the awards now. We also, of course, do have an award for Shuttle because he uh, did have the most wins. That is Shuttle over there. He did have the most consecutive wins in the entire tournament, so we're going to give him a whole bunch of cash because we're total ballers down here. That's a lot of money. That's the equivalent of $10,000. Now, next, for our civil medal, Buddha Silver Medal, we're going to give that to Flash. So he's saying make some noise for Young Ho, also known as Flash. Each of these people are uh, significant figures at GOM TV. He's going to get uh, about 15k. Probably put that at home with all the other big pieces of cardboard he's won. And uh, I'm gonna get that given to him in just a second. There's Flash. Make some noise for him. Congratulations to him too, by the way, for getting second. Clearly, he's very consistent. First place in the GSI, second place at the 
Gom TV Classic. We're going to be doing the first place prize. This badass is going to be ending it out. Without these sponsors, these tournaments would be impossible. Thank you again, Intel, for making this possible. And here is your winner, Jadong. Look at that piece of cardboard. That is pretty fancy. Got a nice hue of purple and red. There it is, the tournament winner. There are a lot of people underneath that thing. Hiding from Jada. He gets the cup, he gets the cardboard, he gets the 40k. And he gets a lot of glittery things falling on him too. EJ Dong. Starcraft ID, J Dong. The champion at the GOM TV Avertech Intel Classic. What an accomplishment. This totally makes up for losing the MSL. And I'm sure we will see him competing again in the future. And here are his teammates. Orange Champagne all over. Oh, ownage. Own. Total ownage. He needed a little bit of owning after doing so well in this tournament. And now he is going to drink some champagne. He, uh, I guess he's underage, but hey, he is Jadong. Does it really matter? He's actually 21 in Zerg years. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Without these hits, this tournament would not be possible. And definitely tune in next time. This is not a one-time deal. We're doing this uh, year-round. We're going to have a brief break, but we're going to come back with some more GOM TV, Avertech Intel Classic action in several weeks from now. Well, that's going to be it for here. This is Nick Tasel Splot signing out. Thank you to the community sites. Thank you, everybody who posted news. Please spread the word. Feel free to watch the BODs. Oh, more ownage. Feel free to watch uh, the BODs again and again. Let our sponsors know that you enjoyed this. Let Gulf TV know you enjoyed this. Feel free to give us some feedback. We're going to be upgrading this whole event a whole lot. Now we're going to throw Jadong around. Let's hope he has insurance. Well, we're going to tune out now. Thanks again, everyone. And keep playing StarCraft. Well, Gumpy's going to have a party now. We do this after every uh, season of this, so...